Interviewing for cloud roles makes one thing painfully obvious. Knowing definitions is not the same thing as knowing systems. And confidence doesn't come from studying more slides or watching more videos. Confidence comes from shipping so much real cloud infrastructure that you can point at and say, I can build that, I've built that. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to actually build up cloud skills, the kinds that you are gonna see on the job. So to learn cloud, you need more than just good study habits. You need to understand how systems are designed, secured, paid for and operated in the real world. Now that means coding, infrastructure, security, business decisions, networking, and actually shipping real projects. In this video, we're gonna break down 11 practical principles that you can use to do just that. So principle one is ship real systems. If you get nothing else from this video, I hope that you take this away. If you want real confidence in the cloud, you have to ship real systems. This means that toy examples or half-finished labs have to go out the window. Now these are real systems that you design end-to-end, -end, you deploy, you break, you fix, and you eventually tear it down. Understand shipping forces you to make decisions. It exposes you to what you actually don't know that you think you might know. And it also turns all of that theory that you learn in certs that is really useful into a real useful skill. Understand three well-built, well-documented, well-designed projects are probably worth any cloud certification. This is where cloud confidence is actually built. Now I should make the caveat that of course I'm not talking about Azure Solutions Architect certs or AWS Solutions Architect certs. If you're at that point, you probably already have experience in cloud, you're probably already shipping real systems and you need something to validate your skills. Now let's move on to principle number two, design systems, not tools. Before you choose services, you need to design the system. Think about architecture first. What needs to be protected? What could possibly fail? What absolutely has to stay online? Security and high availability are not things that you're gonna wait to think about until later on. These are things that are design decisions that you need to think about right away. Identity boundaries, network isolation, secrets management, blast radius. Good cloud solutions assume that things are gonna break and then are designed to sustain themselves through that. Now, if your architecture only works when nothing fails, then it is not production ready. Principle number three is that cost is a design constraint. Every cloud decision you make has a cost. And if you wanna work in cloud professionally, you're gonna be working within real world business constraints. High availability costs more money. Managed services cost money. Redundancy costs money. Good cloud design is about balance. Reliability, complexity, and price all pull against each other. Now, the goal isn't a perfect architecture, it's an architecture that fits within the constraints you're given. Principle number four, if you can't code or won't code or at least vibe code, you're not ready for the cloud. If you wanna work in the cloud, you should start learning coding principles now. Now this is not because you wanna become a software engineer, but rather because modern cloud is driven by code. Infrastructure as code, CLIs, automation, CICD pipelines. You don't have to go crazy or learn advanced algorithms. You do need to understand variables, conditions, loops, functions, and how systems are wired together. Also, cloud gets a lot easier when you stop clicking around in GUI portals and you start understanding infrastructure as code. And basic coding really is not optional anymore. It is a foundation for cloud. Principle number five, an important one, understand how web systems actually work. Cloud exists to serve applications. And if you don't understand how web traffic flows, cloud is always going to feel really abstract. Things like DNS, load balancers, application servers, containers, databases. Requests move through real paths. And networking matters when it's tied to how systems actually communicate with each other. Once you understand the full request lifecycle, cloud stops being so mysterious and starts kind of just making sense. Principle number six, and this is a recommendation, learn one cloud deeply and then replicate that across other clouds. So pick one and commit to it. Learn compute, storage, networking, secrets, anything else that you need to learn with Azure, for example. And of course, this is where a certification can help. You could get the AZ-104 or the AWS Cloud Practitioner and then supplement that with the labs that you're doing. You don't wanna chase all of these different tools at the same time because you're gonna be very scatterbrained and you're not really gonna be an expert in anything. If you get really good at one cloud, it's easy to replicate across the other clouds. Depth first and then portability second. Principle number seven, and this is one that I wish I was born learning a lot earlier, is that Docker and Kubernetes are crucial. These are two technologies that you need to work in cloud and you should learn them well. Docker teaches you how applications are packaged, configured, and then run consistently and repeatably. And then Kubernetes teaches you how real systems scale, fail, and then recover. Together, they force you to think in terms of environments, networking, storage, and resilience. And again, these are two things that I wish I was learning a lot earlier than I did. 
And these concepts show up everywhere in cloud, even if you're not using Kubernetes directly in your job. Time spent here is gonna compound faster than almost anything else you learn. Principle number eight is that projects beat certs. You have to build and explain. So not only are you gonna plan, design, and build something beautiful, you're actually gonna think about why you built it that way and practice communicating that. You have to understand, building and explaining are probably equally important life skills. My recommendation for people who aren't comfortable explaining technical things is to do exactly what I'm doing right now. Set up a camera and talk to it. You don't have to upload it to Instagram or YouTube or anything like that, but getting in front of a camera, you're gonna see where the faults are in your thinking and where you kind of have this inability to explain certain things. Then you can study with GPT, talk about it, practice with whatever your favorite LLM is, and try it again. If you do this every day for a couple weeks, at the end of that couple weeks, you will be significantly better at speaking. And this is how confidence shows up in interviews. Principle number nine is that labs do not have to be expensive. They can be very cheap and temporary. You can build a very serious system for a few hours and a couple of dollars. And this does not have to be anything permanent. Build it, break it, delete it, and then rebuild it next time when you have more mental energy. That cycle of build, fail, and improve is also how real cloud skills are built. Now, principle number 10 is to design before you build. Think about what you're gonna build, how traffic is gonna flow, what needs protection, what can fail, Talk it out to yourself, draw it, get a whiteboard and make a big beautiful diagram of what you're gonna make. And again, use tools like ChatGPT to challenge your own assumptions and ask if there's a better way you can do things. I've found when labbing in the cloud that I tried to do things one way and then I realized there was a significantly easier way to do it and a better way to do it. And this habit alone is gonna put you ahead of a lot of people learning cloud. Okay, so the final principle is that confidence comes from proof. When you've designed systems and shipped real infrastructure, you've broken things, fixed them, and put them back together and built up documentation for it, a lot of your self-doubts start to disappear. This is how cloud skills compound, this is how interviews change, and this is how opportunities start to find you. Now, if you're serious about getting into the cloud, keep learning, keep studying, but also lab like crazy and take these principles to heart. I wish you guys the absolute best in your cloud journeys. Thank you so much for the support lately. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions, and we'll see you in your cloud admin job. Bye.